Good evening and welcome to our Smyrna Town Council workshop to set our agenda for our April meeting. Before we move into our items for discussion, I'm going to ask um, Mark Adkins to do our pledge and Brian Hercules, I mean Mark to do our prayer and Brian to do our pledge. <laughs> Father, we just come to you today with, uh, once again, grateful hearts for uh, having a community that we can live in and be proud of, Father. Just, uh, Lord, as we look forward towards spring and some of the events and the outdoor activities for families and children, Father, we just pray safety upon everybody. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over our employees, keep them safe as they do their jobs, and uh, just uh, thank you for the blessings of the beautiful weather. Father, we also want to continue to remember the people of Ukraine as they tend to fight for their country. and and uh, their freedom. So we ask all these things in your name. Amen. 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 Place the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Brian. Sorry, I almost got that mixed up. Uh, we will move on to our items for discussion. And item one is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with Galls Incorporated for uniforms for the police department. Chief? Yes, ma'am. Mayor and council, this is our contract that we do for our uniform bids. And this year we only had one bidder, which was Galls Incorporated. And we're fine with that. Galls has been our vendor for quite some time now. We have had great success <laughs> with them. And we're asking permission for the mayor to sign the contract. Council, any questions? We sure don't want the police department running around naked, so we will make sure that we get that on the Thank agenda. And no one wants to see me, though. No, okay. <laughs> Got it, Chief. That'd be pretty galling, <laughs> wouldn't it, Chief? <laughs> So we'll move on to item two, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement relative to the rental of the Thomas Edison Secret Lab exhibit from the Betty Brin at Museum. Mike? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor. Council, um, as you know, we rent a lot of exhibits down at the, uh, the SOAC, and this is no different. So we have had this exhibit before, and uh, we've coordinated it through the Betty Brin Museum. They did give us a great discount this time, and they did last time as well. So a lot of times when you hold off to the end, they want to get get those rented, and that's what uh, we were able to do this time. So the exhibit is um, uh, STEM-related, a lot of education-based um, type things and exhibits in there, or pieces in there, and uh, it is $27,000 plus shipping for the time that we have here at Target Stage is 2 to 12. Um, and we have been meeting with some uh, possible sponsors on this one, and uh, we're hoping to get that, uh, some of that paid for, um, and we'll let you know if we do. Great. Questions for Mike on this? Okay, thanks, Mike. Item three is consideration of a proposal and authorization for the mayor to execute a sublease relative to a portion of Sharp Springs Park to Beatty Farms for wildlife and agricultural purposes. Yes, ma'am. I know this is probably the first time y'all have seen that because that's the first time we've had it before you. Um, that area was farmed out there for several years by the Rhodes family. And uh, we've had some requests and people were interested, so we decided to put that out um, for a proposal, receive proposals uh, on 64 acres of Sharp Springs Park. And if you're ever out there at Disc Golf or the Greenway, you'll see that area. Uh, we had three uh, people respond, Beatty Farms, Jake Jacobs with Jacobs Construction, and Greg Rhodes. Uh, they all submitted proposals. We had an evaluation committee made up of Kay Arnold, Jimmy Stitt, and myself. Uh, Kay deals with the leases. And uh, Jimmy has a good idea of what goes on as far as the, the agriculture at Sharp Springs. And, of course, I've been involved with that um, for a while. So um, we had uh, the high score was Beatty Farms. And their uh, proposal stated they would pay 127 per acre. And, uh, Springs, and of course, I've been involved Sorry. with that. Sorry. Uh, That's all right. WRA on how they kind of do that. So we we're recommending to approve a lease with in corn. So okay. the rest of it, they'll have to get whatever they're going to put out. On this? Okay, we'll move on to item four, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with Thomas and Hutton to perform. As you know, the fire hall, fire hall number one project was approved uh, last month at the previous council meeting. Uh, this is to provide construction engineering inspection services uh, by Thomas and Hutton, uh, them and their architect to help prepare the construction plans for the project. Uh, the items there listed uh, are what they plan on doing for the, pro for, for the work as far as uh, pre-con meeting, material shop drawings, submittals, reviewing those and approving them, 
and any post construction uh, punch list items. Questions for Tom on this? Okay, we'll move on to item number five, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with the SEC Engineering. Mm -hmm. To perform engineering design to add a pedestrian signal at the intersection of Sam Ridley and Weekly Lane. As you know, we are have an existing uh, traffic signal there. Uh, there's also um, Tennessee Rehabilitation Center is just kind of up the road a little bit from there off 9th Street. This is a route that the people from uh, who are staying there in the dorms do like to go in the evening and afternoon hours. They come down to this intersection. Currently, there's no pedestrian signal there, so we're looking to add pedestrian signals uh, because it is a state route and we are adding ramps. TDOT is requiring us to put together a set of construction plans, so this uh, contract is to put together construction plans for approval by TDOT and then to go out to um, uh, bid for contractors to be able to install all the ped signals, the ramps, and small sections of sidewalk. Questions for Tom on this? Then we'll move on to item six, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with SEC Engineering to perform engineering design for a new traffic signal at One Mile Lane and Amable Road. Uh, with this intersection, there's been a need for some traffic control in that area. We did have some uh, recent projects come through that's starting to trip that threshold for a need to have a traffic signal. We have existing mast arms on our boneyard that we've pulled from other projects on Sam Ridley. Not that uh, they're one size fit all or anything, but uh, they just happen to fit this one time. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be able to recycle those, use them on the project. This is, again, to get a set of construction plans together so we can go out to bid uh, for this work. Be honest. You just didn't want Steve to ask the question, didn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 no, Brian's making y'all keep extras around now, isn't he? Yeah. We <laughs> keep doing it. Uh, we can show it to you, Mark, if you have time. There is one. Uh, any questions for Tom on this? Okay, we'll put that on the agenda. Item 7 is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to approve the ranking of the selection committee for the Lowry Street Lowry Street Streetscape Project Phase 3. That is a mouthful. Yeah, uh, we are, uh, Charles is uh, working on the Phase 1 project right now, uh, for the sidewalk projects in the downtown area. Also, he's working through um, getting, uh, working toward notes to proceed to construction for the Phase 2 project. This Phase 3 project just came through with a multimodal <coughs> access grant, and that's going to provide sidewalks on the northeast side of Lowry Street. Uh, going from Enon Springs up to Sam Davis. Uh, we went out for uh, to hire an engineering consultant to do the NEPA engineering design and also do the CEI work. Uh, we, ran, we had three respondents, Reagan Smith, Gresham Smith, and Weiser, and we're asking you guys to uh, approve the ranking, and then we'll go out to get a contract with that engineering consultant. Questions for Tom on this? Is that, uh, I understand correctly. You'll be, if it's ranked number one, that's who you'll go after first. Is that correct? Yes, we'll we'll ask them to submit a uh, a proposal, and as long as it's you know a reasonable cost, then we'll continue working with them, bring you all the proposal for approval for the contract, uh, so they can start on the project. But uh, if it's something where it becomes unreasonable, then we can go to the second ranked uh, consulting company. Okay. And the reason I asked that was uh, the thing that caught my eye was the one that had the lowest. <clears throat> past performance <coughs> rating with the town was the one that came in first overall. So that's what I kind of, item no. B. Item B. Where it says past performance on town projects. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have the those okay. individual. I just have it the was, total it was number. It 53 and, okay. and I think the highest was 55. But um, overall it was the high, the, that, that okay. company is the highest overall. Just yes. That one thing caught my attention. Other questions? So this will get us sidewalks from, um, where did you say it was starting? Enon Springs. Enon Springs yeah. All the way down to the bridge. Yeah, this, this will go to Sam Hager, and then, of course, the other projects will take us all the way to Hearts Branch Bridge. Yeah. So, okay, perfect. Where does it consist of besides the sidewalk? This is going to include uh, some drainage as well. Currently, there's no curbing along sections of uh, that route, so it will include curbing some drainage to keep that water off the road, 
uh, probably fill in some ditches, install some uh, storm drain pipes as well. Just to movement be of utilities, any movement of utilities? Uh, probably not, but uh, there may be some minimal utility, there may be minimal utility uh, relocations, but usually sidewalks don't really uh, No overhead lines done that. away with or anything like that, though. I'm sorry, what? No overhead lines done away with. No. Okay. No, all the overhead electrical fiber, all that would stay where it is. Gotcha. Um, I don't know. What's the width of the sidewalk you're putting in? Five feet. Other questions? Perfect. We'll move on to item eight, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with HDR to prepare traffic <coughs> response timing pl timing plans for the signals along Sam Ridley Corridor between I-24 and Old Nashville Highway. Uh, with our new ITS system, we have uh, some wave chronics detection at uh, these intersections that are listed in here, Sam Ridley at Stonecrest, Potomac, Wolverine, and Sam Ridley at Old Nashville, as well as Old Nashville at Genie, which is gonna be coming online here soon, and Old Nashville at uh, Rock Springs Road. What that's gonna allow us to do is, in the event that in an off-peak time, we get an influx of vehicles to come to a certain leg of the intersection. The uh, detection will determine that, okay, we've got 80% occupancy in a turn lane or straight-through lane. We need to be responsive and change the signal timing to one that allows more time for that leg to clear out. And then it's also going to connect, it will inter integrate into the other signals along the way to say you're about to get more vehicles coming toward your intersection you need to increase the sig the timing on that leg of the intersection to allow those cars to go through that way if there's not a person working at the time uh, our traffic operator may uh, may be off peak hours maybe after hours at night uh, the system will <coughs> kind of run itself as as far as selecting the appropriate signal timing plan to be able to flush those cars through without someone have to be there and see it and change it manually Questions for Tom on this? Okay, then we'll move on to item nine, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a work agreement with Monitoring and Management Services LLC to update the fats, oils, and grease control program for the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, yes, ma'am. So the FOG program, um, it does have an impact on lift stations and the wastewater plant. So uh, we have a, a a plan in place now uh, it needs severely needs to be updated uh, inspections are becoming very difficult with staffing because there's so many uh, we're up in the upper 190s right now uh, most of its restaurants there's some apartment complexes and stuff so MMS has extensive experience and was actually recommended to us by the MTAS consultant we work with at the wastewater plant to rewrite the plan uh, recommend changes to the ordinance that references the plan, uh, do inspections, and they also have a database that collects all this data and information for uh, viewing and for the state when they need to see it. Questions for Mike on fats, oil, and grease control. You might be able to make some money off that. Maybe. <laughs> Any questions? and we'll put that on the agenda. We'll move on to item 10, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a professional services agreement from the firm of Caius Rogers, Barger Holder, King, PLLC, K&R to perform title work, closing services, and lender release documentation for the North Lowry Waterline Project. Jeffrey L. Yes, Mayor and Council. As you're familiar, uh, for many years now, we've utilized uh, Larry Talbert's office for, for most of these services. However, Mr. Talbert is retiring. And so, uh, Caius and Rogers is already one of the four outside <coughs> firms that is, that is on our, our pre-approved list that we have a master agreement with. But obviously with a specific project, we want to do an individual contract for that to lay out the terms. Um, speaking with John Rogers, he was uh, honoring the same price that we had uh, been paying Mr. Talbert. Uh, previously, uh, Mr. Talbert's office did not contact the lenders, though, to, to receive the release documents and those types of things. Um, but on those tracks that do have mortgages where banks need to be contacted, uh, that will be an extra 
$250 per tract. And so we, we talked about doing it hourly or per tract, and I think it'll work out better for us, uh, especially if they don't call back very often uh, to do the per tract. Um, but they will be uh, performing all those uh, services, uh, title opinions, closing services. Uh, they'll maintain the acquisition table and communicate directly with the uh, town utility okay. director. Okay. Questions for Jeff on this? Okay, we'll move on to item 11, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation and R3 zoning of property located on tax map 54, parcel 19.00, requested by Sean Collins on behalf of Keith and Carolyn Bryson, containing 68 acres. The property request is located west of Rocky <coughs> Fork, Amaville Road, and this is a second reading. Hey, Kevin. Mr. Mayor and Council, there's nothing that's changed on this since you looked at it on first reading. This is an annexation request for, for one parcel of land. Uh, it does connect to the town in a couple of different locations, uh, but it would also surround one track that would not be within the town. Uh, the uh, land use plan would support a medium density single family residential development in this area. Surrounding zoning is R3 in town and RM in Rutherford County. Uh, the town would be providing all services uh, except for water, which would be provided by CUD. Uh, just one thing that is that this one is a little bit different. This uh, track does not have any road frontage. Uh, there is an adjoining property owner uh, who did uh, agree to provide that access to the town uh, if it is ever needed. It is a vacant tract, so there's not any, uh, there's no one living there or anything like that at this time. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this and did recommend approval, and uh, staff would also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Okay, since this, we've already seen this once, we will move on to item 12, which is consideration of a resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on tax map 54, parcel 19.00. Anything to add? There's nothing to add, no. Any questions on this one? We'll move on to 13, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 18, parcel 6.12, 6.13, and part of parcel 6.05 to go from I-2 to I-1. It's requested by Eli Waldron. The property requested to be rezoned contains approximately 2.39 acres and is located on 3 Industrial Boulevard, and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yeah, again, Mayor and Council, uh, this is when you looked at last month and nothing has changed. This is two tracts of land and a part of a third tract that is requested to be rezoned from I-2 to I-1. Uh, uh, it does lie within that airport innovation character area, so that it's either district would be consistent with our land use plan. Surrounding zoning is a mix of C-2, I-2, and A-1. Uh, again, there was a concept plan submitted. That is, this is not a PUD, so there's nothing holding uh, the, them to that development plan. That is uh, their concept of what they were wanting to do with the property. They did provide that to you. Uh, the Planning Commission did re review this, did recommend approval, and staff would also recommend approval. Questions for Kevin? Okay, seeing none, we'll put it on the agenda and move on to item 14. Consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 29, parcel 19.06, and part of parcel 19.08 to go from C2 to C2 with an H2 height overlay. It's requested by Mr. Patel. The property requested to be rezoned contains approximately 2.71 acres and is located at the corner of Sam Ridley Parkway West and Expo Drive, and this is a second reading. Yes, Mayor and Council, this is a property that is currently zoned C2, and this would just add the layer uh, with a height overlay to it. Um, the uh, land use plan, again, would be supportive of this uh, request. Uh, surrounding zoning is all C2, and some of the hotels in that area uh, have been also uh, granted a, a height overlay as well, so it is consistent in that regard. The maximum building height in C2 is 40 feet. This request is to add a height overlay to allow a building of 61 feet 4 inches. Um, and uh, we Planning Commission did see the site plan for this as well last month, and ha it has been approved pending this approval. Uh, we also, there is a, a subdivision plat that has to be done to move a property line, uh, and that has also been submitted this month. So um, the Planning Commission did, re did review this, did recommend approval. Uh, staff would also recommend approval. And refresh my memory, Chief was good in regards to Right, they're to the providing problem. access, or actually there's going to be an access uh, well, to, to Expo Drive, but also to Colonnade Drive, which will provide a good uh, flow for the truck. The, the widths of the drive aisles all meet the requirements for the aerial truck as well. Perfect. 
Any other questions for Kevin? Okay, we will move on to item 15, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 50, part of parcel 12.02, to go from C2 to PCD. It's requested by Rob Mulchin. The property requested to be rezoned contains approximately 1.05 acres and is located on Lee Victory Parkway, and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council. This is, again, something you all looked at on first reading and nothing. Uh, we don't have any additional information. Nothing has changed on it. Uh, this is on Lee Victory Parkway. Uh, it, again, it's part of the 24 Gateway area. So, uh, is our land use plan for, for that area? Surrounding zoning is all C2. Uh, this proposed PCD is for 7,000 square feet, uh, eight bay automobile service and repair business. Uh, the elevations do meet design review. Uh, access will be from a private drive, which connects to Lee Victory Parkway. And this private drive is owned by Parkway Baptist Church, and proof of that ability to utilize that drive uh, uh, is, would, would have to be submitted uh, prior to submit, with the submittal of the site plan. A subdivision crediting this lot has been approved, but is not recorded at this time. Water and sewer will have to be extended to this property from off-site. Uh, and this property is all uh, part of a larger parcel that is in the floodplain. And so the uh, grading plan with a, to create buildable lots out of the floodplain uh, would have to be submitted and reviewed and approved. Uh, this would be one of the two lots that would be created out of that. Um, and a letter of map provision will be required to be submitted and approved by FEMA as a part of that. Um, again, the Planning Commission did recommend approval 542 against. Staff would recommend approval. Question for... Kevin on this? Kevin, any, any feedback since the last meeting? We have, uh, I don't have not received anything additional from them, no, okay. regarding that access drive. Um, there has been, uh, the plat that I referenced does show an access across the, the adjoining lot to the drive, so, so that has been addressed, but as far as the access to the actual drive itself, we have not received anything at this time. Kevin, I refresh my memory, but it seems like when we address this last time y'all had talked about ways which y'all had suggested to them that they resituate the building on the lot so that the all the cars wouldn't be out front or the bays wouldn't be out front and there was no willingness to to adjust it on the lot is that correct well, i don't know if there's i would say there's no willingness i think there's there is an easement uh, on the left side which does limit somewhat how far forward they could push it uh, it's a overhead uh, power electrical uh, easement, uh, so it, it made it difficult for them. They do want that. As, that is part of their advertising, though, is is that. And so they did present that um, alternative to have <coughs> some additional landscaping in the front with some that would help hide it somewhat. Um, but so I mean, I, I, I would say there's. There's some hesitance to remove it. I don't think there was a, a downright, we don't want to move it, but they just, with the, the easement there in that location, made it difficult. As chief planning, they did bring, they did bring to us a, a revision on how they were going to try to screen that with their landscaping island in the parking lot. Uh, that was one of the concerns I had as well. And uh, they have some vegetation that, you know, it's like, very thick growing type of uh, trees that will block a lot of that view. The glass on the front, if I'm remembering right, was reflective glass. It's not like see-through doors. And it's all brick facilities. So. I think y'all had talked about like turning the building in the back way, but they wanted the bay doors visible on the front. Is that correct? Well, that easement was an issue as well. I mean, yeah. we did talk about that, but the, the easement creates a little bit of a, a hardship for them to work that building in a different manner. So we were just trying to find a way to work with them and still protect that, that view from the parkway. Okay. Other questions or comments? Okay, we'll put that on the agenda and move on to our um, item 16, consideration of items to be sold at surplus sale mm -hmm. through Gov Deals on an online auction company. Hey, Rex. <coughs> Mayor and Council, in your packet is a list of surplus items that need to be sold at auction. 
The list includes town vehicles, mm -hmm. seized vehicles, computer items, and other equipment. The town seeks permission to conduct an online auction to sell surplus items. The auction will be advertised in the Murfreesboro Post, on the town's website, and on Channel 3. All the surplus items will be sold through GovDeals, an online auction company, and the staff is asking authorization to conduct this sale. Questions for Rex? Rex, it looked like there were some good items, but not necessarily anything I want in my Easter basket this year, no. I don't think. A lot of cars. A lot of vehicles. Cars, ink cartridges, monitors, yeah. computers. Be a good deal for somebody. Could be. So, uh, 18 pieces of three by three dance floor, Mary Esther. Mm, that would be for two. I don't dance very much. I think Tim's the dancer in the group. <laughs> um, okay, we, Rex, we will happily put their other. Okay. This was a five-year loan. Interest, something happened, and we didn't do the project together now, so that would be one item we need to add, and I'll, I'll get this to you guys in your in agenda quick. Uh, the other one is the sewer rehab. We've been informed that the loan documents are almost ready. Uh, that would be a 20-year loan. Not sure what the interest rate is yet, but I don't think it would vary much from what we're seeing here. Uh, and that's Basin's A8 and A9, uh, old part of downtown Coleman Street down in that area. So uh, hopefully they'll get, uh, get those people some relief there. And again, we'll put that as a placeholder. If we don't receive the loan docs, we'll have to there. move it again. Um, with this, we will have to do a public hearing at six o'clock at the night of the council meeting so we'll have to recess do a short public hearing jerome will come he's the engineer on uh, both projects and do okay. a short description and then vote on it after we come back in from recess uh, from okay. the council meeting questions for mike we will put those on as placeholders Thank and uh, get that taken care of Okay, um, under other tonight, um, director's reports. Hal, anything? Come Steve? Come out. Rex? <laughs> Charles? Charles always has something. He always does. He has to. <laughs> Lowry Street, that's what he's got. Yes, You're going to talk about Lowry Street, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Lowry Street, uh, our Stansel Electric will be back on the project on Monday. We'll work on the streetlight foundations and the underground utilities. So they'll be back on. Uh, Sam Ridley, we had the final walkthrough with TDOT, the contractor, and our inspection team. And they were very impressed with the project. We just have some punch list items that we will continue to work on. Uh, Lee Victory Rec Park, Mike and I met with the contractor this week, and they will be back on the project on Monday. Uh, Blair Road from Sam Ridley to Laverne, uh, that section will be closed <coughs> April 18th through about the end of June, maybe into mid-July. Uh, Old Nashville Highway, the developers uh, talked to their paving contractor this morning, and they are mobilizing on site, so they will be ready to pave that section uh, next week and it'll probably take them a couple of weeks doing base and topping Tell me again where it's going to be closed At the end of Sam Ridley as you turn right going into Laverne okay. That will be the section going left will remain open. It's just the section the right, from the Sam section Ridley going, right. going into Laverne to the driveway entrance of the High Point 24 project Will we be able to do any sort of signage or anything prior to that just to let people know? Uh, we've uh, Kathy's put out a working machine. She's working with Laverne, Laverne PIO also, but there is detour signs already up. Okay. And they've already done those, but they're covered right now. But uh, And we've worked with the school transportation, so they're aware Forward. of it coming. Okay. <coughs> Where is city limits there? Right at the curve. As soon as you make that first curve and go right before the bridge. Oh, so this will be there. partially in Sparta and partially in Laverne then? Is that yes. Right? The driveway to the development will be in Laverne, but this is the connecting road that they will be using, so they are building this road at their expense. Other questions? Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Carl? No, ma'am. Chief? No, ma'am. Mike? No, ma'am. Mike? No, ma'am. Kevin? <laughs> 
Charles? Yes. <laughs> Charles, uh, I'm going to call you Charles 2. Uh, that's fine. Charles I'll 1 and it. Charles 2. I've been two. called worse. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, I just want to uh, send out a, a thanks to Jonathan Hemingway. He's our traffic operator. When the tanker truck uh, flipped on I-24 uh, just north of Waldron Road, Jonathan uh, was watching the signals and actually watching the video feed of the vehicles stacking up in some locations. He was able to quickly enact some of the diversion plan timings that we already have from TDOT into certain signals along Sam Ridley. Uh, he also saw a backup around uh, 2.30, 2.45 that hit uh, weekly lane and, uh, and uh, Sam Ridley, a lot of people decided to go that way come home and avoid I-24, he was able to adjust the signal timing right. on it and get everybody through pretty quickly. Uh, kept from having red lines on the, if you looked at the map and you didn't see any red lines in Smyrna, saw a lot unfortunately in Laverne and uh, some down in, in Murfreesboro, but we were able to keep everything flowing really well through here thanks to him and uh, he's working really hard, doing a great job with that. Our ITS system really kicked in and did a great job for keeping our roads clear. Great. That's exactly what we want to hear. I, I called Brian. I was actually in that traffic and was routed off at I-24 onto Sam Ridley, and I called him. I told him I didn't even have to stop till I got to Potomac, and I got stopped by Potomac and then didn't stop again the rest of the way down. It was not backed up at all. Great. Great. Yeah. Um, it, it handled it well. Great. Thanks. That's what we like to hear. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Jeff? Chef? Chef, I have to tell you, we had your lunch today. It was so good. Got to spend a little extra time on the treadmill, though, especially from those desserts. Chef, you might want to mention, don't we have something special coming up? We do have Easter too. Good afternoon. Yeah, we do have an Easter um, brunch brunch that's coming up on um, my mind. April, hold on. I can't remember. It's hold April, April, April 17th. 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 And we will start at 10 o'clock from, from 10 to 2. It's reservation only. It's a little higher than last year, but it's going to be just as good. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, and you can call for reservations. Yes, you can. And you can call the event center for <coughs> reservations, and I would highly recommend it. It is um, a, a great day. If you leave hungry, it is your fault. I agree. Thanks, Chef. <laughs> Todd? Chief? No. Kathy? No. Okay, Amber? No, ma'am. Mayor Council, I do always have a couple of things that I want to share. We'll call you Charles, Charles, Charles three. three. Charles Three. C Three. C One, Two, and Three. Okay. Um, I think we've got a couple of pictures. I, I want everybody to look at this picture because this was a great day for the town of Smyrna and for some kids from across this county. We, uh, uh, the Smyrna Event Center, did a great job of hosting the Rutherford County Schools uh, special needs prom this week. Uh, Kathy and I got to go down. I think uh, even the newspaper was there. There was some things in the paper this morning. But you talking about having some fun. These folks know how to have a good time. We had a ball. They were all dressed up. As you can see, the prom dresses and the tuxedos and masks. And uh, I got tickled. I was telling one of the teachers, I said, you know, I remember going to my prom and when the music started, it took about 30 minutes worth of music to get anybody dancing. This was the first song, I think. Uh, they didn't waste any time getting to the dance floor. Uh, just a great event and just a lot of fun and just a very, very special time for uh, these kids and for the town of Smyrna. So uh, my uh, appreciation to everybody involved uh, at Rutherford County School System. Next, uh, I want to welcome uh, Bluff City Soap. Uh, we had the honor of going out and being at the ribbon cutting, and I will draw attention to this uh, uh, picture. Uh, if you'll notice in my left hand and in Rex's left hand, there's bags where we shopped for our wives because we knew how important it was to take gifts and home. And honestly, Todd has no and, bag. And I was going to say, if you'll notice, Todd's hands are empty. Um, he said what that, is it about him buying gifts for his wife? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do welcome Bluff City Soap, and we appreciate the chamber coming down and the ribbon cutting. We had a lot of fun, and it's a great store. And I, I even uh, I will tell you, a couple of people noticed uh, that it was a bigger store than some of the other locations like Murfreesboro have. Good. Uh, so it's it's a nice uh, nice store, and uh, it would invite everybody to go out and, and take a look at Bluff City Soap. Next, uh, of course, uh, we're winding down the time on the uh, Vita site here at Town Hall, located in the back of our building downstairs. Uh, but if you are uh, one of those folks that are lagging behind on getting your taxes done and need some help, 
Uh, the VITA site is a free site uh, for you to get your taxes done. They are by appointment only by calling 615-830-7940 or visiting www.yourlocaluw.org forward slash VITA. Uh, they can set your appointment, and they are uh, they do have uh, appointments on the weekend. Uh, so if you are having trouble getting here during the week, uh, make an appointment for a Saturday. Uh, and April the 9th uh, will be the last day uh, that they'll be down there because we have something following right behind April 9th with VITA. I think that next Monday or Tuesday starts early voting. So early voting will be coming to Smyrna. For the first of, I think, four times this year, we'll have early voting uh, participation in uh, Smyrna. So, uh, again, if you need help with VITA or your taxes, come see the VITA folks. They do a great job. Last but not least, love where you live. Uh, that's me getting on my soapbox, I guess. But uh, we continue to, to battle the, the litter across town. Uh, we actually had somebody send us a picture of one of the uh, local trash uh, companies that dropped a bag of trash out here in front of our building and chief and I were talking about it tonight we we actually have a picture of the truck and the license plate and we've reached out to that company to ask them to make sure they do a little better job and take a little pride in our community I want to share with you uh, and I'm, I'm gonna be like chef I've got the date it's 22nd I was gonna say the 23rd April 22nd I've sent an email out to the council and all to all of our directors we're gonna be participating in an Earth Day event and we're going to use that time to do a cleaning event at Sharp Springs Park and then also here on Lowry Street at our normal uh, location where we do uh, uh, the Adopt-A-Mile through the Streets and Public Works Department. So any of you that would like to come out and help us from 10 to 12, uh, we're going to take a two-hour break on Friday and go out and clean the streets, put our money where our mouth or put our feet where our mouth is, I guess. We're going to walk the street and pick up some trash. Uh, I'd love to have any of you join us. Uh, that are available to do so uh, let Kathy know if you're coming uh, so we can make sure and, and, and put uh, with uh, Tom and his crews make sure we have all the people in the right places uh, and with Mike out at Sharp Springs so uh, looking forward to that event so the town is going to be participating in cleaning up a little bit so Mayor that's all I've got tonight Great. Jeffrey L. Uh, just uh, like Brian stated earlier today at, at, uh, at Rotary but um, we have uh, finally uh, solidified all of the uh, agreements for the tracks on Genie Lane. There's uh, two owners and three tracks that are waiting to close, but uh, the deals that are done, we're just now waiting on the actual closing to occur. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. HG? Yeah. Um, last week, myself. Jerry and Brian had the occasion to go out to the Stewart's Creek High School for the ribbon cutting for their indoor athletic facility. It's a, a really nice building that uh, the uh, uh, teachers, students, parents, administration have all got together and, uh, and uh, built this beautiful facility. It's got batting cages and uh, the whole nine yards in there. Great. Very nice. Anything else? Oh, you can probably <coughs> shop local would be a good thing for you to do, Mary Esther. I always shop local. What's the other thing? Well, you've been kind tonight, so I didn't think I needed to tell you. <laughs> I thought it was more of a blanket statement, not directed directly at me. Family. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. <laughs> okay. Timmy? You know, I actually don't have anything tonight. <laughs> okay. Jerry? I don't have hardly anything either, but uh, just um, say the same thing as HD did. It um, really enjoyed uh, going over to Stewart's Creek. That is really a nice facility they have there. Um, and also, I think next week is spring break, so uh, I think your teachers and children and kids mm -hmm. and all enjoy that and be, be safe as you're out playing, playing outside. So um, appreciate what you do. All right, a um, couple of things just to remind folks about uh, all of our Recreation League's signups that are going on. Um, kind of getting towards the end of that, they're starting to fill up, so you still want to get uh, a kid or an adult into a program, you probably ought to move quickly. Um, I know that the Adult Softball League, uh, Monday night, Thursday night, are, uh, we're not full to capacity, but we're full enough that we don't need more teams, that we could take more, but we're not recruiting teams at this point. 
Uh, Friday night could still have a couple more church teams, but um, we're doing pretty well. Um, and then uh, uh, baseball, fast pitch, uh, flag football, soccer. I don't know what else is going on. Basketball and football are off season right now, I think. So I think we're, I think that's it. Sure. Um, also, congratulations to uh, the Hollings Heads. They actually had their move in day. I think it was last week or the week before. Um, so they are actually in their building working. Uh, I think they have a grand opening or a ribbon cutting or something coming up. But um, congratulations to them. Uh, I can tell you that a few people that I've talked to that actually work in the building are super excited. Um, they said that the facility they came from, I guess in Nashville, felt more like a dungeon compared to this. So they, they really like what they've got and they're, they're happy to be home in Smyrna. Um, and then uh, on the um, screen, I think we're going to have on the screen, um, the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church has got their Women's History Month event going on. They're going to have LaShan Dixon, Rutherford County Health Department Director, the Miss United States of America Community Volunteer, and, uh, oh, sorry, Miss United States of America, as well as the Rutherford County Health Department Director. So she does both roles. She uh, does. Yeah, and then uh, Carolyn Peoples will be there, who uh, volunteers around the community, probably uh, well, very, very well known. And uh, our, our own council member, who's not here tonight, Raquel Peoples, will be uh, I think they did that on Sunday. Did they do it this I past Sunday? I think they Sunday? did that they Sunday. Did. Yeah, they just okay. did it. Well, I thought it was coming up this yeah, Sunday. Yeah, so no, they just they did it. They do it again. And, yeah, do it twice. I just announced it so they could do it again. <laughs> so in, in that case, never mind. Congratulations. There you go. Uh, and thanks, uh, thanks to Raquel for representing the council there. So Absolutely. Um, that's all I've got. Thanks. Mark I didn't have any dates on it, so okay. didn't know. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey L. just mentioned all the Jeannie Lane properties he's been working on. I know he's been busy in Nashville. This week on behalf of the town too. So Jeff, thanks for <coughs> pouring yourself into the community there and doing the work. Uh, I want to say another thank you to the codes department. I know I've had a couple calls and emails and things from <coughs> neighbors concerned about other neighbors, and and uh, the codes department jumped on that. And I think letters are going out. So sometimes when they hear about it, that's when they know about it and they get right on it. So. Um, you mentioned early voting coming up already, and we have a special guest here tonight with us, Rhonda Allen, sitting in here, and I know she's going, yes, early voting's almost here. Uh, Rhonda's a candidate for the county mayor, and I just wanted to speak on that just briefly because I know some of us have heard, uh, why is she running for mayor and you're the mayor, right? So there's some confusion to a lot of the constituents that she is running for county mayor, and this is our town of Smyrna mayor. And so if there's any confusion out there, that's why you see uh, different signage out there currently. It's not time for us. We'll, we'll see our time later. So, And last but not least, uh, my little granddaughter's having a birthday party Saturday, and I can't wait. So happy birthday, Lenny. That's all I got. Nope. You also have... Oh, I do have something else. <laughs> Kathy, you reminded me I needed to do this. Um, we wanted to welcome the Red Bicycle to Smyrna. Uh, Brian, myself, and the council members here all attended their soft opening, I believe it's Friday night last week, and then we did a ribbon cutting and a grand opening on Sunday. The Red Bicycle is now part of our community. They're open for business. It's a wonderful little establishment there on the corner of Lowry and 41, or it's Lowry and Sam, uh, Hager. Sam Hager Street right there. They've painted the building white. Uh, it's really, it really looks good, and if you get an opportunity to go down and visit them inside, you'll be uh, impressed by what they've done inside, too. The food was delicious, the staff is super friendly, and we welcome them to Smyrna. So. Absolutely. Great. A couple of housekeeping items. Um, I want to invite everybody out, everybody out to the Easter egg hunt. It returns this year. The Smyrna Fire Department and Police Department are busy planning a fantastic event for our community. So mark your calendars for Saturday, April the 9th at 1 p.m. at Lee Victory Recreation Park. Children ages 1 through 12 are invited to participate in the egg hunt. And the Easter Bunny will be on site for photos. Thank you to Smyrna Natural Gas Department for sponsoring the event. I will tell you, if you are five minutes late for the event, there will be zero eggs left because it looks like a vacuum cleaner has gone out and sucked everything up off the ground because I cannot tell you how quickly they... Even the grass. Oh, everything. It's <laughs> gone. It's gone. So um, make sure you are on time. 
Um, the second thing is I've been a little busy this week, but um, have been so excited to get back in classrooms. I got to enjoy the opportunity to speak to um, Dr. Montblanco's Advocacy and Policy Change class at MTSU last week. It's an undergraduate and graduate level course in the sociology department. I'll be honest, I was a little bit nervous. I didn't know what kind of questions they would ask. Would they be really tough questions? But they were really excited and energized. We had a lot of discussion about, um, initially they thought the main way to, um, to get out and was to go to Washington, D.C. and to march and all of that. And we had a lot of discussion about, you know, what affects you daily is your local politics. And so we had some really good, <coughs> healthy discussion. Um, also got to participate with Raquel yesterday at Laverne Middle School and for the Women's History Month program. So thank you to them for having us out to participate. Um, I also was at Rocky Fork Elementary School with eight classes of first graders and their teachers um, to speak about my role as mayor. And um, if you've not ever gotten to spend two hours with first graders, I highly encourage it. I encourage you to do that because um, you will greatly appreciate the teachers that we have here in Rutherford County if you do. Um, but as you can see, they had a huge sign for me when I got there. Those students right there were my greeters to walk me to the class. Each one of them stuck their hand out, introduced themselves, told me what class they were in, told me um, what grade they were in. And so they have student ambassadors at their school that do things like this. Um, we also had the opportunity today to participate in Rotary. Brian gave um, a great PowerPoint presentation and um, did a wonderful job and then we answered some questions to the Rotary staff and then um, I got to speak at SIMA yesterday. yesterday. I was trying to remember which day. I spoke at SIMA yesterday and at Parks on Tuesday, Tuesday. and um, it's really great to get out into the community and to spread the word about all the great things that we have happening here in the town of Smyrna. So thank you to all of those organizations for inviting us out to be a part of your group. Um, Rhonda, I was going to have you come up to the mic if there's anything big we've got going on in the county that you kind of want to talk about. I just want to tell you all what a great job Rhonda does in working with us as um, here at the town council. You know, when things are going on in the county, we have to have somebody there that we can talk to, but also somebody who works well with others and other county commissioners because just because something's going on in Smyrna doesn't mean those people in Las Casas that represent that area. And if she doesn't have a good working relationship, then um, we may not always get that vote. So we appreciate what you do for us. So any big stuff going on in the county? Uh, something that you all may not know about because it's actually happening in Laverne is um, there's going to be a new charter school that's going to be opening. Um, that's a little bit different for us. We've never had a charter school in Rutherford County before. It is technically a public school. It will be funded by public dollars. Um, we haven't really quite figured out what that relationship's going to look like. There will be others coming. There are two more applications that have been submitted. Um, we have health and education this coming Tuesday, and one of those applicants is coming just out of a courtesy to come meet with um, the health and education committee for the commission because they don't have to have any connection really with the county commission at all, even though we're the funding body. So. We're feeling our way through this, but, um, but yeah, you'll probably be hearing a little bit more about that, especially when they open up um, in Laverne. Um, I do know you've probably talked about it here some, but um, Weekly Lane, is their convenience center is going to be completely redone, and so that's going to be exciting and uh, be a greater opportunity for the folks out there to not be backing up on, on Weekly Lane any longer. And I don't know if Judge um, Alexander, if she hears the littering cases here, but I do know that there's three judges in Murfreesboro who do, and they have pledged to... Um, to have citizens that have public service hours, they're gonna be picking up litter. They're gonna be reporting to the workhouse and be picking up litter. So if she hears that, that may be something we wanna consider doing here as well. Great, thanks, thanks Rhonda. Council, anything else? <coughs> if nothing else, then we are adjourned. <laughs>